Hi. We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Is your insurance agent trapped? Jerry? Probably. When agents work for only one company, <laughs> their options are simply limited. But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop around to find you a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Find an agent at trustedchoice.com. Jordan Wolf won't pan out. Joe Walters is overrated. Joey Sankey won't make it at the next level. Fire, 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 fire. For over 30 years, Cascade has been the most trusted helmet in lacrosse. Introducing the Cascade S. Cascade, passion to protect. She only went furniture shopping three days ago. There's no way it got there so quickly. She said everything was available in stock, three-day delivery. Wow. Why didn't we get that? Ever wonder if there's a better way to shop for furniture? Ray Moore and Flannery. But I think it should go. Bigger selection. Oh, gentlemen. Better service. Yeah. Guaranteed delivery in three days yeah. or less. <laughs> Ray Moore and Flanagan, delivering a better experience. No way your furniture's here already. Raymore and Flanagan, three-day delivery. Do not mention delivery. Ever wonder if there's a better way to it's shop so for great. furniture? Let me show you. Wow. Raymore and Flanagan. my new living room. Bigger selection. That is beautiful. Better service. Come together, right? No. Guaranteed delivery in three days or less. Isn't it great? That's what I needed. Awesome. Where'd you say she got her furniture from? Raymore and Flanagan, delivering a better experience. Jerusalem, Tel Aviv. Vacation beyond belief. Book your trip now. like bad happens with any team or and I really I really want to see how these teams handle the adversity of having a close game because a lot of th these teams have pl play a really good competition so I'm really really excited to see how this game turns out with Uganda and Korea so Uganda heading in with a record of one in four I should correct myself but a victory a come from behind win over Luxembourg that made coach Pete Kinnegar's uh, tournament here they trailed 5-2 early in the third quarter on day two of the tournament on July 13th, but then losses to Hong Kong, Wales, and France, but they had a day off yesterday, so we'll see if they're the fresher team. Korea already has a win. They defeated Mexico back on the 15th a couple days ago, 9-6, lost yesterday to Belgium with losses also to France and Germany. So our officials are ready to go. White over red with Patrick Oriana getting set to take the face-off here for Uganda against the face-off man in Do Hyun Ko, who will take the majority of the face-offs for Korea. Korea in the red on red. Muggy conditions, but it's the final game of the night to take us into day number nine tomorrow. Uganda yesterday had an awesome day off. We'll tell you about that, too, as they had a... Terrific 
set of clinicians that help this developing country. Both Oriana on the right and Ko on the left. Ko with the faceoff win. Quick opportunity and the shot past Alan Amoni. Well, that's a quick look at Alex Millen with the shot. Millen, 66 in red, and he is a native Canadian from Bishop's University in Quebec. Now, he lives in Korea where he is an English teacher. This is probably his final appearance for Korea, but he is a resident there, and he has helped grow the sport at a quick transition and the goal coming less than 20 seconds in. Yeah, I really think that goal really... Um put some motivation in this Korea team to really uh, start getting forward and put some, um, start start really getting the motivation to really go forward in this game. Do Hyun Ko is able to win that face off and he gets the assist as Oriana battles and this will be a three on three situation. Just underway, it's a 20 minute running time clock in these FIL World Championships as we'll have a loose ball push against Uganda and a good scrap by Hyun Min Mo, a 20 year old first line midfielder. So back behind here is Korea and the approach from their head coach and backup attackman Wan J Park has been more so about patience and showing a lot of terrific fundamentals here on the field. And outside, everybody will get a work, work the ball around. Andrew Kim is their leading scorer who attends Young Harris Junior College. Kim has 10 goals and 14 shots. Alex Millen now, that was his seventh against a man-to-man -man defensive look by Uganda in front of goaltender Alan Amoni. This is my third game of these championships. Connor and Amoni has represented himself quite well. As the shake from behind from Eric Yoon. The skip pass and the right alley dodge from Hyunjun Park. Park turned aside. They'll dodge again from Andrew Kim. Kim, who had played at Young Harris Junior College, he's now 27. Shot low to high by Millen, and he got a quality look. Yeah, I really like how this Uganda team is coming out very aggressive here in this first quarter, and they're playing man-to-man -man really, really close. And I think this is gonna. I think this is really good as they get the. Looks like number 12. Gets to the ground. Oh, looks like there's a flag right now. Looks like it's going to be on Korea as Uganda's going to be a man up here. We'll see what the call was. Looks like it was a push. Yep, that's the 30-second push with possession. So the foul against Korea. Three minutes gone in the opening quarter, and Uganda will have the ball for the first time. This is a Ugandan team that has a lot of athletes as Coach Pete Kinnegar has said, you know, we can run with pretty much everybody, but we don't have a lot of game experience and handling the ball under pressure. But as we had a lovely conversation with Pete before the game, Connor, he believes, and he believes in this process, the validation that he's already gotten. As Oriana here will start the man up in the six on five, he has seen the incremental progress that I think any coach wants to see, no matter what level it is. Yeah, he really, really preached on the uh, on the term family. He really wants this team to be close together. And he also mentioned that they spent the day with Iroquois just learning some like basic stick skills and learning like learning some other basic terms to really help their game. And he said that re was really um, a really awesome thing that they got to experience. And I think that was great for Iroquois to really help a uh, developing um, lacrosse team out. Patrick Oriana's pass sailed away. And it's a turnover, but John Okura, starting defender for Uganda. We are all even, however, with the penalty having expired. Uganda 0 for 1. We'll finish up that story as up ahead. This is going to be the clear for Trey Kawagule, and another flag is out. And a shot went in. Hold on a moment. This will be a call against Uganda for the warding off. And our near side official is going to tell us it's an offside. It looks like we got another flag on the uh, bench. Well, there's a lot to sort through for our officials. So I think we're going to get a substitution foul on Korea. The ward off appeared like it turned, it turned over the ball, but because they are 
offsetting fouls, Uganda is going to keep possession. So after all of that, they still have to pick up the yellow flag, and Uganda will have a pair of early man-ups. They just turned it over. Yeah, really, uh, really sucks that they couldn't get that goal that they scored there. But it looks like th looks like we're all even here, as the like you said, the penalty is offset. So let's hear. I want to see if they can um, get that goal back that they tried to get. It looks like another flag is. Looks like it's probably going to be on Korea as they keep the play going. And on the rollback, and that is number 16, and Reagan Ochen. And as the ball is on the ground, that signals the stoppage on this continuing clock with five minutes in. Procedure called again against Korea. So this will be a brief. Now check that the first foul had expired because we had the offset, offsetting calls. So this will be, again, another 30-second foul. So the second true man up for Korea, Patrick Oriana. He's their best midfielder. It looks like they're really playing, um, playing out here on this, on this uh, man down. It looks like they're really trying to pressure this uh, Ugandan offense. Kasule, Reagan Ochan, quick shot, and this goes wide. And goal is Sun Woo Kim. No relation between the Kims, and he also has been very busy here for Korea. Sun Woo comes in, having made 44 saves through four games. Quick stick, and the shot wide by Oriana. Looks He's like we're even now, too. Quick restart, though, for Uganda. Kenneth Kasule. And Oriana outside. Oriana taking a jab from Min Jae Yu. Korea with only four long poles for this tournament. They had three long poles go down with injuries as the pass for Kasule knocked away by Jake Hong Koo and out of bounds. And that is certainly a real challenge for head coach Wan Jae Park because he has to find ways to rest them over the course of the game, particularly with all the heat here in Israel. Yeah, I really think that's we're going to really see um, how how they manage the um, playing of the long poles in the second half and really see how tired they get and really how they play through the adversity of just being tired. I think that's going to be a real challenge for them, but I'm excited to see if, if they could um, pull it off and stay strong. Yep, just four poles. So what a unique situation is developing. Country Millen got it on the crease from Nabuki Suzuki. 2-0 Korea. We'll see if the goal stands. And it does. It was going to be a 30-second interference. So Alex Millen with both to lead Korea. Yeah, I really think that uh, goal, goal really helped put a real dominance for Korea. And just to show, it looks like Uganda's huddling up right now, too, just to talk things over, make sure everyone's all good. And just honestly... As a, def as a defender myself, just got to stay calm, relax, and just can't let it. Can't let every goal get to you. You really can't. If you let every goal get to you, then it's going to be a long day. Do Hyun Ko has looked good so far on the faceoff, and Oriana, who runs as a two-way midi, he has taken probably 200 faceoffs this week, and the wear and tear on that is Ko, who is just a fogo. He is able to drop it and leave it for Hyun Min Mo. Offensive midfielder, and Mo will start the inverts as they bring back on Ungo Ryu, who subs through in the midfield. And Ungo Ryu will go back behind for Suzuki. Millen away some, from, some, from, some pressure, and they'll dodge against this man-to-man -man again of Uganda. 2-0, the lead for Korea. And a good start despite a pair of flags against them. We've played nine minutes of this opening quarter. Mo, and he's met quickly by the long pole, Ronald Otim. Millen got it to the outside where they think about the sweep across. And the sweep across from Hyunju Park again. And Park trying to turn back to his left.
but the D-Mini shut that down. Feed in tight, and Amoni, not much on the shot from Andrew Kim. That's the guy that Korea wants to get the ball to. Yeah, really, really good uh, stoppage there by Uganda. Really, right, what they re really need to do right now is just get the ball in their offensive hand, get the, give the uh, start start wearing down the Korea Korea defense. As we said, they only have four poles, so get the ball in, in Uganda's offense's hand. Let's and wear them down, and get them tired, and it's gonna hopefully as as they get tired, they get sloppy, and it, that that should be the key for this Uganda offense. Just starts slowing them down. So Oriana outside. Uganda 0 for 2 and a couple of man ups. Down the right alley, the shot. Kim making the save. The shooter on the far side was 13 and white. Castro Onan, who has yet to touch the ball. Onan had very flashy cleats as we saw him earlier. He's got the perfect colors, I'd say, for Uganda. Kind of a fuchsia color. I think that would be the, the name of it. As Kim eats up this shot coming from Regan Ochen. Looked like it was going to be off goal, but he outlets it here for Jay Hong Ku. Kim back to Ku here on the D. And can Korea execute? They will get the pass ahead and the completion to Min Jae Yu, who attended Yu Pen. And Yu drops into the attack for Nobuyuki Suzuki. We are now under nine minutes to go in the opening corner. Ralph Binarczyk with Connor Watson, a defender at Clark University, working as an organizing committee intern and a, a future coach at the college lacrosse level. Pair of goals from Alex Millen to lead Korea. And Uganda 0 for 2 in the man up, the early developing story. For Korea, Hyunmin Mo and thought about turning the corner. And Bernard Otim, number four in white, handled him well. I really like how Uganda is playing a really aggressive defense here as they're really trying to pressure this Korea Korean offense here. I think it's a really good idea to start start beating them up a little bit and start putting some pressure on them, not let them let Korea start pushing them around as they really want to try to get this ball back as Millen's pass to the crease, and that could not be completed. As I know, as I, as we probably know, that the Uganda Uganda coach knows that these poles don't, there's not a lot of poles here. Tries to really get get them really. Martin Kormatech was the shooter, the D midi for Uganda, and up ahead Korea with a fine looking clear there from defenseman C Young Choi. We got a chance to meet him on the field, Connor, before the game. He's 18 years old, just graduated. The Brooks School, a prestigious high school in Massachusetts. And Here's like Young Ju Ryu shooting. Looks and like we got a flag here. And Ryu shot wide. And we will see in the flag against Uganda. Heading off the field will be Ronald Otim. And we'll take a look at Korea's man up unit. Yeah, I really like to see how Uganda plays this uh, man down here. As I, I don't, I'm not sure if they're going to want to uh, press out as much or if they're going to just try to keep it easy on the defense and not press press out. Um, I'd be really curious, I'd be really um, interested if they did press out because it'd really try to get the ball for the offense. Time out on the field, we'll do the same and come back with the first man up for Korea as they lead Uganda 2-0 tonight in Netanya, Israel.
A man up for Korea, leading 2 0. Ralph Pinarchik with Connor Watson. Tonight in Atanya, Israel, as this pass knocked down by Hyunju Park. And Park on the attack will lay it behind for Nobuki Suzuki. Ungyo Rio at the top. Popping out was Mo. Mo overhand shot, and Alan Amoni has no problem with it. Yeah, I really liked how they uh, started pressing out on that de on that uh, defensive man down. I think that really helped them um, get this ball back and get the save. But an errant pass. Here comes Mo shooting overhand, and Amoni was able to recover. And while down on his knees, able to perhaps deflect the ball over the top. Yeah, that was a great save, getting back there and just making sure that ball did not go in the cage. That would have been a bad turn. That would have been a bad goal for Uganda. We near the six-minute mark, and Uganda is going to start to clear from deep in their own end. And back to the conversation with Pete Ginnegar. Number one, they had their first day off for Uganda after playing five consecutive days. Good strip on Ochan, 15 in red, and Hyunjun Park trying to come up with the loose ball. But the pickup from John Akura, the starting pole for Uganda, as he laid it ahead and... Uganda battling for it. They won't be able to pick it up. And finally with the pickup from Min Jae Yu. Yu racing ahead. Min Jae Yu with an angle. And a good decision to pass it up. And on the twirl, you can see how talented all four poles are for Korea. They only have four as he tried to go in and look for the Superman across cage. That is a legal move if you score then land in the crease in the FIO le levels. Yeah, if I'm Uganda right now, I'm I'm I want to take my time on this clear. There's no there's no rush on the clear as there's um, no no clock. So honestly, just take your time, relax, settle it. Speeding ahead was John Okura. Down the right alley as the Shot from Luca Bene and Kenneth Kasule shooting. This one bouncing and it'll be recovered momentarily by Uganda. Korea applied the pressure and the ball would be a loose ball push belonging to Uganda with Fasil Subuga starting attackman number two in white involved in that scrum. And Castro Onen going with the flashy cleats. He along with Oriana have been the leading scorers. Onan with six goals. Oriana with five. And having four assists. So now Uganda goal on extended. Quick stick inside. That was Oriana. Or check that. That was 16. Reagan Ochan on the look. Yeah, I really liked how they're trying to get these quick passes in here and try to get this defense off guard. Now Korea... Sitting back in a very packed in zone defense with the two short sticks on the wing. Kenneth Lubakakene. Lubakakene with the skip pass, and he did not have a midfielder on this side. An unforced turnover by Uganda. Yeah, really good defense there by Korea. I think having that zone defense really. Uh really confused the Ugandan offense as they were getting really pressured in the um, in the first couple of possessions of this game. Ungyu Ryu will throw a rope all the way across the field. Numbers perhaps for Korea as the pole. Young Song Sok Kang picks up the clear, but he did his job. And back to work goes Millen. Millen to Park as Park is chased by the double team of Uganda. Another flag is out against Uganda. They're going to get a slash on Pina Shaban, 22 in white. And from behind, Suzuki. Up top, the step down came right into Amoni off the stick of Jehan Park. And now we will get the call officially. Indeed, it is a one-minute slash against 22, Shaban. Yeah, I'm not really sure um, how long these uh, Korean long poles are going to be going up going up past midfield. They're, they're going to have to get tired qu soon enough, and it's going to be really hard for them to go up. I, see, I, I feel like they're just wasting their energy going up and just passing it. I think they need to dump the pass off quicker. 
And we'll keep an eye on that. So the four poles that head coach Juan J. Park mentioned, he's got to find a way to keep them fresh. And especially with each passing day, you're playing back-to-back -back days, so it's so hard for the body to recover for all these teams, even the U.S. as Young Ji Ru hit his pass for, from Young Yu. Well, they'll say it was deflected. Alex Millen maintaining that to the officials. There is a flag down, and it's going to be another penalty against Uganda. Looks like they're going to go all four pulls here, so I'll be curious to see how they play this uh, man down. So a one-minute slash against short stick, Dimitri Kawagule. Big opportunity for Korea. Shot is deflected and out of bounds. Going back to Uganda with no backup. Ronald Otim stepped out on the hands on the Korean shooter. Yeah, right now, if I'm if I'm Uganda, I'm just going to let let Korea come to me, not, not let um, any pressure come as... There's, like we said, there is no rush to get the ball back on offense. Just relax, and it looks like we got another flag on the play. And we do, and that's Martin Komikensch. There on the far sideline, the D-Midi, that is fouled, and Korea, their own worst enemies. So the turnover on the shot, and Uganda is... Going to set up for the clear. They trail 2-0, final 40 seconds here this opening quarter. Looks like Uganda's penalty, ju penalty just ended as they're going to be man up here. Oriana. Shot from the outside. Maybe a bit of a force. Kim making the save. Big left-hand shot from Liberty Twesime. What a great shot he had there. One more look perhaps for Korea. Kim out of net. Kim losing it, but the nice pickup. How about the vacuum from Hyun Suk Kang? As Kang legs it ahead to take care of the first quarter. Two goals from Alex Millen for Korea. And they withstand a couple of early man ups for Uganda. Two nothings are score in the final of the night in day eight of these 2018 FIL World Lacrosse Championships. We're back for the second quarter after this on ESPN+. Plus. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Signature Lacrosse. Signature Lacrosse was built by the players for players, and it's focused on revolutionizing the progression of this game. Follow Signature on Instagram, at Signature Lacrosse, to stay up to date on developments in products like Magic Mesh, the longest-lasting, strongest-performance mesh in the game, and by Epic Lacrosse, the leader in technologically advanced lacrosse equipment. Proud to be the official head, chef, glove and arm protection of these world championships in Natanya. 
Epic is proud that so many teams from around the globe trusted it for all their gear needs. Epic lacrosse, live, play, and be. Ralph Pinorchik with Connor Watson. Here comes the second quarter, Korea in red, Uganda in the white on red. A pair of goals from Alex Millen leading Korea. Both teams with man-up chances, and procedure will be called against Do Hyun Ko of Korea. And the official will actually untangle their sticks. And Patrick Oriana here into the attack. And nearly a fumbled pass. But we start in a six on six even situation. You distance. But they have not been able to feed the crease as of yet. And they dodge with Luba Kambene. Kenneth Lubankan. Luban Kekene, he was not able to get the shot off, and the pressure by the Korean defense. Eventually, Uganda is able to rally and keep possession. I really think that if Uganda could uh, capitalize off of this uh, this illegal procedure on the faceoff, I think this could be really huge for them here. A pass to the wing and is away from the stick of Reagan Ochan, and Korea legs it ahead, and a takeout slide to knock down the Korea player on the loose ball, but this ball is going back to Uganda, and Uganda can't believe it. I really also like how Uganda is being very aggressive on defense with their checks. I think it's really giving a point to the Korean offense that, hey, don't, don't, we're aggressive, and you can't, like, you can't run all over us. It's, they probably think that they, we can, they can run all, all over them, and I think Uganda is trying to get the point across, hey, we're not going to let you in into the uh, crease at all. Ungyu Ryu, number one in white, off to Alex Millen. And Nobuyuki Suzuki, who plays back at X for Korea, this developing nation that is said to have fan uh, fantastic fundamentals, the way Pete Kindergarten described it, that the Asian countries have that. And they're very excited that they'll be hosting the ASPAC tournament, which is the Asia and Pacific Lacrosse Championship coming up next year. So lacrosse is starting to develop and gain attention in Korea. This is Millen shooting, and Amoni sees it well. What a great save by a Uganda goalie there. Alan Amoni with the stop, and Millen uh, got a good look from seven yards away. Amoni came in with 45 saves with a 41% save percentage. And on the pickup outside, we have another flag as Michael Behizi came up with a ground ball. And we have a foul against Korea. Korea's, Korea's been really biting themselves in the butt with all these penalties. And if I'm, Uga if I'm the Uganda coach right now, I'm telling my guys, hey, we need to capitalize on this right now. Like, they're, kill, they're killing themselves with all these penalties. We need to get a goal right here. In the box with the one-minute slash was Young Suk Kang. Can Uganda get the quality look? Late change on for the fifth defender for Korea. As they need to figure out when a pole, who is going to play with a pole. In tight, the save was made by Kim. And in the crease violation against Uganda. Yeah, if I'm Korea right now, I'm just trying to kill this penalty. Get out, get out of the way. Don't, don't look for pressure. Try, once, and once the penalty is killed, put it right back on offense. Si Young Choi, who will attend Johns Hopkins University in the fall. Great to meet him on the field before the game is this pass intended for Min Jae Yu is dropped. Korea scrambles for the next possession as Alex Millen is crunched along the sideline and he stepped out. So the ball back to Uganda as they swarmed and pinned Korea to the sideline. That was great defense by Uganda just getting that ball back and try to try to capitalize right here as they now we're even here so So Korea got it ahead, and the pass was knocked away, intended for Regan Ochan. Ochan goes down 
and slides and picks it up. So Uganda can now establish the possession. Trey Kawagule still looking for his first goal of these world championships. Well, these Uganda guys, as Pete Kinnegar said, you know, they are, they are lax rats. They just don't know it yet, but they truly love the sport. They're watching the live streams. They're watching YouTube when they're back in their hotels. These guys can't get enough of it. As we have a flag down away from the ball, and it's going to be Kawagule. As you see, they're going to check that. It's going to be Korea. And Jay Hong Ku that sits in the box. As you see there, they switched the long poles. They switched Lori shorty, um, short pole to long pole so they could uh, try to get that uh, extra pole as one of their main poles was off. So I'm very curious to see how Uganda attack if they uh, decide that they want to attack number 23. There's only, again, four poles on this Korea team. So when one of them gets a penalty, save made by Kim down low. Best scoring chance of the game. Came there from Reagan Ochan of Uganda. He got the feed from Castro behind. Kim, as he's pressured, and more penalties and flags flying as the feed ahead here for Min Jae-Yu. And the pass dropped. And we will see yet another penalty six minutes in. A one-minute slash. And I think it's no surprise, of course, Connor, with two developing countries with all the flags... But what needs to occur to sharpen that up? Because clearly it is, it is affecting both teams in terms of the flow and how they can build off of this. I think it really just comes down to the fundamentals of the game. I, th I think when, when we see these developing countries that, yeah, they want to be aggressive, but we also have to look at the, we also have to look at the, go back all, always to the fundamentals and try to really work on poke checks and not, try, not trying to use the stick and be out of control with everything. There's a shot, and Korea has a 3-0 lead. Ung Yu Ryu from distance. So a man up tally, and it's 3-0 Korea. Yeah, I think Korea is really trying to dominate here on these, uh, on these penalties. They're really trying to take advantage of these penalties that um, Uganda is getting, getting with a couple of penalties that they've missed. They finally uh, capitalized on this one. I think it was a really big one for them, and I think they're really proud of they actually, they actually um, scored on a man up here. And they've had plenty of chances. And now they're trying to build on it with face-off man Do Hyun Ko. 25-year-old. And this time it was not Oriana for Uganda, but Trey Kawagule. So Korea wins it on procedure. And they have what feels like a commanding 3-0 lead as we approach the midway point of the second quarter. And Andrew Kim has not been involved, Korea's leading goal scorer tonight. He has very little ball carry time. They had that one look as he swept across the middle early in the quarter, in the first quarter. Ung Yu Ryu. And the dodge came, Amoni making the save, the rebound, and Amoni had a good look at it. The follow-up came from Hyunjun Park right outside the crease. The ball carries across midfield. And the pickup in traffic somehow by Ryu. The stick of Hyunjun Park. Flags are out in tight. It went to Kim. And another flag coming out against Uganda. Yeah, i really like to see if... Uh what this, what this, uh, how long this penalty is, is it's really going to be effective of how um, Korea plays, plays this uh, man up. Korea with consecutive man ups within about a minute. Their leading goal scorer, Andrew Kim. Nobuyuki Suzuki. Skip pass, and Hyun Min Mo was getting ready to crank one. Andrew Kim shooting from the outside, an ambitious shot. And we are midway through the one minute slash against Uganda. Alex Millen with two, Ryu with the last one. Kim down to the crease, sharp angle, great finish. 
Nobuyuki Suzuki. Got the feed from Kim, who collects his first assist. It's 4-0. Yeah, it looks like just a little bit of miscommunication there on the Ugandan defense as they weren't sure um, who was going to be rotating to the guy as they, they were man down. It was a lo And just the late rotation really uh, really killed it for, for the Ugandan defense as they try to try to come back after that and hopefully try to get a face-off win and try to get something, something going on offense as we haven't seen yet, really. And the penalty is costing Uganda dearly. Consecutive man-up goals for Korea. Oriana tried to push it out to the corner. Nobody sees it. And our officials will gather. We had procedure called. This takes us to the media timeout. 9.34 to go before halftime. Korea has jumped out ahead on Uganda 4-0 on ESPN+. Korea has built a 4-0 lead as we are midway through the second quarter with Connor Watson, defender at Clark University, and an intern of the organizing committee here. In Natanya, Israel, I'm Ralph Bidnarchik bringing you the last game of the day, day eight in Natanya, with the tournament concluding with the gold medal game on Saturday morning with, again, the U.S. and Canada. Looking like they are headed, and they've been headed, on a collision course for that one, but the games beside that look just as fascinating as down the right alley, Hyun Ming Mo is stripped. And again, the active stick of John Okura of Uganda. And the story is the Ugandan penalties have cost them consecutive man up goals and Alex Millen two early goals to start the scoring for Korea. Two man game with Suzuki. Suzuki with the throwback. He had Kim, good concept, but Okura is going to have the ground ball. Yeah, I really think that if the Ugandan defense really just settled down and relaxed and not really throw so many slap checks and threw more poke checks, that this defense would be so much better and more relaxed. Well, Korea not relaxed. Alex Millen is going to get 
at minimum a 30 second push with possession. He's going to the box as he rode Okura hard. Looks like that's gonna be a minute penalty is the signal from the ref. And it is Millen. So Uganda a chance to take shape. And in talking to one of the fine gentlemen in the sport, Pete Ginnegar, the head coach of Uganda, who has gone over to Uganda from his native Burbank, California, seven times in the last 12 months, six in the last 10 months. His team had the day off yesterday. And just that rest, he thought, would do wonders. They did not practice, didn't watch any film, truly wanted to give their bodies a chance to recover and get their heads clear. But based on the sound of things, Connor, that this Uganda team loves the game so much they keep watching it and watch other games on our streams as it is Kawagule picking up this ground ball. Man up continues. Ochan was looking to feed the crease. And in the far right corner, Trey Kawagule for Uganda, 14 and white, couldn't get there. And the ball goes to a Uganda timeout. So they will preserve the possession with 7.16 remaining in our first half, lead 4-0. And talking more about Coach Pete Ginnegar, he talked about a realistic approach. This is an inexperienced team. They had a bad for fourth quarter against France, which they wished they had a chance to, to build off of. But, but the realistic approach of winning plays, winning quarters, it's not about the wins and losses, it's about the process that eventually will get to some results in the future. Yeah, I really, he really, really preached on the uh, aspect of the experience and just like wa have them watching the games. He really talk, told us that they went, you got to win to all these U U.S. and Iroquois and Canada games because they wanted to learn more about it, they, about the game. They really want to be engaged. And even with their day off, I bet you they still watch some YouTube videos on some of these games and probably live stream some of these games because they really want to get better as a team and they really want to try to be a dominant team. But like we said, it's always the baby steps. And like having Iroquois come out and help them out just a little bit with just some steps and everything really gave them probably some motivation just to go out there and have some fun. Because that's, that's really what uh, um, th their coach really said. They just want to come out and have some fun because that's what really what they're here for. They want to have some fun. It doesn't really matter about the wins and losses. They want to get some experience for their guys. And they really want to have fun out th on the field but try to also get some wins. And the term that Pete Ginnegar uses is, in Israeli term, a Jewish term, mishbaha, which means family, that the Ugandan team knows, and that's what they preach, and it's, a, it's just a terrific human interest story, regardless of whether or not Uganda will ever have success, as Kawagule works it to the wing. But the fact that they are here, they are trying, is already a win, as Kim faced the shot from Ochan, and back up belongs to Uganda. They did defeat Korea four years ago in Denver as a subplot to this game. Kawagule lobs it the other side, and Kim comes up with the denial. Ochan was darting through at the right time. Ochan skip pass, and he overshoots his teammates. The pickup belonging to Nobuyuki Suzuki. And the battle as it's kicked ahead by Twisime. Castro Onin down into the corner, tries to save it. And he will here to left-hand shooting Liberty Twesime. His pass was deflected, and the vicious battle ensues, where eventually it's found by Alex Millen. So Millen and Korea will reach the four-minute mark. Make that the six-minute mark of the second quarter. And the lead is four for Korea. As they would stand a defensive possession. And onto the field is Andrew Kim. Kim forced back. Now to the crease, the shot by Suzuki blocked. Out of cage is Amoni. And Alan Amoni, nice athletic play to get it ahead to Castro Onin. Uganda a chance to run. Onin for Kasule. Kasule and a right-handed shot. He was caught in between. 
His man did not cut to the front. Ken Kasule was looking for Trey Kawagule, and it's a Ugandan turnover. Yeah, and while Uganda was on offense, actually, they, um, Korea was subbing their poles. So really, it's kind of starting to show a little bit that they're getting a little tired. And again, Korea played yesterday. And losing to Belgium, Uganda would be the fresher team. Shot from the outside, but Korea's in rhythm. Ung Yu Ryu. A long shot from 15 yards out beats Alan Amoni. 5 nothing Korea. Yeah, I'm not really sure what uh I'm not really sure the goalie knew what happened there. Is it really hit looks like it hit top right corner as it just a beautiful shot by Korea as there's nothing really that you can do about a goalie there with just a perfect top right top right goal. Second of the game for Ryu. Both of his shots Connor have been something else. Yeah, they've been really spectacular, and there's honestly they've been spot on. There's nothing really the goalie could do as they're just perfectly, perfectly placed. Faceoff was won by Do Hyun Ko, but Korea throws it out of bounds, looking to get it to the wing. So Uganda's in trouble. On paper, this appeared like it could be. Kind of a 50-50 game. Could Uganda steal a second win after taking a victory away from Luxembourg earlier in this tournament? And we have a timeout on the field. A called timeout by Korea. So the day off that, that was used by Uganda was fascinating. They had a clinic put on by the Iroquois Nation. The Thompson brothers were there how personable they were, and I think the best part about it, Connor, was you think the Iroquois Nation and a clinic, they're going to put on a clinic in terms of superior stick skills, but they went through with the Ugandan team showing them the fundamentals, and I think that was particularly pleasing and I think really shows how in touch the Iroquois Nation are in terms of growing the game truly at a grassroots level. Yeah, I really think they enjoy they enjoy learning the fundamentals and just trying to get more basic skills down and try to really grow their game and really just become better players on the field. I think learning from one of the better teams in this tournament and having having one of the better teams show you more like how ways to do more fundamentals, I think it was really inspiring for the for this team and maybe hopefully it give them some more motivation going going down the road and to work harder and really work on those fundamentals and take things away from what the Iroquois taught them. And as I asked that, I found that out asking Ugandan coach Pete Ginnegar, well, the, the concern is when you're at a practice and seeing the Iroquois Nation play in games, they simply have stick skills that are at a completely different level in their own world, their own stratosphere, not even a zip code. But they were very fundamental into what they taught and tried to show players in clinics. Maybe the most dangerous thing that the Iroquois Nation showed this Ugandan team is how to take selfies with their lacrosse stick. Connor, how is that done? I'm, I'm trying to picture that. I'm, I'm not sure, honestly. You're probably going to need... Yeah. We're going to have to ask them over at Vendor Village, is it possible that they can balance a cell phone with a lacrosse stick? I wouldn't and, be able and to do and it. use it as a <laughs> selfie stick? I wouldn't be able to do that. That's that. That would be more impressive than many of the goals that the Iroquois Nation has scored. <laughs> I so definitely agree. I'm going to find that out and have that for the next couple days of broadcasts. As stepping out of bounds was Suzuki in the corner and good pressure by Uganda on the sideline. But it is 5 0 Korea. And trying to battle through on the clear and taking it into traffic was John Okura. Okura had it taken away, now another whistle. And this is an interference called against Korea. Yeah, that's a big call. And hopefully if Uganda can get this clear off, I really anticipate that Korea is really gonna be pressuring hard so they can try to get another goal before going into halftime here. So it is Amoni that has it. The head coach of this Korean club, in case you missed it, is the only player coach or player head coach in this tournament out of the 46 teams. His name is Juan J. Park. And Park is a backup attackman. When he plays in the field, he is in 
player mode. And his assistant coach handles everything, and he says, you know, during games, I'm pretty much not the head coach, kind of. There's a shot stinging in the corner. Quick restart. And Korea shooting the lights out of the ball tonight. Hyun Min Mo put it into a great spot. Yeah, when you put no pressure on, on this offense, they're going to take those shots, and that shot which is perfectly placed in the top. and looks like the top-ish right corner. And when you, like I said, if you just don't put pressure on them, they're going to take those shots all day. Mo with his hands free, and Uganda continues to hurt themselves with turnovers. So 6 nothing Korea. The most goals the Koreans have scored in a game here in Israel was nine in their lone victory. They make that eight yesterday in their loss to Belgium, 17-8. They scored, yeah, let me correct myself, nine against Mexico, nine to six, and then the eight in a loss to Belgium. So face-off win. Off the wing by Okora as he lobs it ahead for Liberty Twesime. As we near the one minute mark, there's been a lot of lacrosse where the numbers almost don't look straight anymore, Connor. Yeah, no, I agree. Like all these, on paper, I, this, this should have been a really close game, but it looks like Korea is just really dominating and taking this game into their hands. Castro Onan and tried to speed dodge, shut off well there by C. Young Choi. Then oh. across it comes, and a great feed is the first goal for Uganda. That was really huge for Uganda. That I, I guarantee you that gave, gave them a lot of motivation as they celebrate this. And especially going into halftime, this is going to really put their spirits up and really try to, try to get more energy from halftime and from this goal, even as, if it's a 6-1 to one game. They're going to try to take that energy and just try to build and build off of it. Trey Kawagule got the cross cage feed. And Uganda with a good looking first goal. Final 15 seconds of this running time clock of the first half. Oriana tied up with Ko. And Oriana had a chance to pick it up. It'll be grabbed by Korea, and that'll take care of the first half. But Uganda spoils the first half shutout. It is Korea 6-1 at the brink. In the final game of day eight, we'll be back in 10 minutes with continuing coverage of the 2018 FIL World Lacrosse Championships on ESPN+. Today's forecast, always sunny. Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, vacation beyond belief. Book your trip now.
We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Is your insurance agent trapped? Jerry? Probably. When agents work for only one company, Michael! their options are simply limited. But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop around to find you a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Find an agent at trustedchoice.com. Jordan Wolf won't pan out. Joe Walters is overrated. Joey Sankey won't make it at the next level. Fire, 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 fire. For over 30 years, Cascade has been the most trusted helmet in lacrosse. Introducing the Cascade S. Cascade, passion to protect. She only went furniture shopping three days ago. There's no way it got there so quickly. She said everything was available in stock, three-day delivery. Wow. Why didn't we get that? Ever wonder if there's a better way to shop for furniture? Ray Moore and Flannery. But I think it should go. Bigger selection. <laughs> better service. <laughs> Guaranteed delivery in three days yeah. or less. <laughs> Ray Moore and Flanagan. Delivering a better experience. No way your furniture's here already. Raymore and Flanagan, three-day delivery. Do not mention delivery. Ever wonder if there's a better way to it's shop so for great. furniture? Let me show you. Wow. Raymore and Flanagan. my new living room. Bigger selection. That is beautiful. Better service. Come together, right? No. Guaranteed delivery in three days or less. Isn't it great? That's what I needed. Awesome. Where'd you say she got her furniture from? Raymore and Flanagan, delivering a better experience. Jerusalem Tel Aviv, vacation beyond belief. Book your trip now. Hi. We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Is your insurance agent trapped? Jerry? Probably. When agents work for only one company, Michael. their options are simply limited. Everybody! But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop around to find you a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Find an agent at trustedchoice.com.
We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. Is your insurance agent trapped? Jerry? Probably. When agents work for only one company, <laughs> their options are simply limited. But a Trusted Choice Independent Agent is free to shop around to find you a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Find an agent at TrustedChoice.com. Ready to start the third quarter. Ralph Pinorchik with Connor Watson. 6-1 the score for Korea leading Uganda. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Signature Lacrosse, by Epic Lacrosse, by Quorum Watches, by Honix, Gladio Lacrosse, and Cascade Helmets. Third quarter underway, and Dae Hong Ko, who's been a very good face-off man for Korea, and he handles things and leaves it for the offense. And let's start here for Korea and their head coach, Wan J. Park, who has not played yet, but he's in uniform on the sideline. What do you think the message was to his team after a couple of man-up goals, and they sit comfortably 6-1? Yeah, I think his message was let's just keep it going and let's get, let's get rid of these penalties. They've had a lot of penalties in the first half, and I think that really, that really killed them. And I think the, the opportunity lost by Uganda was a real bad one. But. And they also perhaps trying to get their best player involved. That's Andrew Kim off the face dodge down the alley. He got the pass. And Kim finishes. He had an early goal. Kim bearing the shot. That's his team best 11th. Yeah, like saying, I really think this the player coach on the on the sideline is really just trying to motivate these guys. And probably said at halftime, like, hey, let's just keep this energy up and let's just keep getting these goals and let's try to run away with this game right here. So Kim the pickup, the goal coming. Less than a minute into the third quarter. And Do Hyun Ko gets procedure. So Oriana will have it. And then if you're head coach Pete Ginnagar of Uganda, it's about baby steps. They got a goal late, a very classy goal. End of the second quarter, what do you think his point and that he emphasized was at the half? Oh, let's just keep positive. I, I mean, I went over to the sideline just to check how everything was over there, and their spirits were still really high, especially I really think that goal really helped them, mot really motivated them, and really kept, really wanted to keep their spirits high. I think that goal really was a, a factor of keeping them in, into this game and keep them motivated and keep them into the game. And I really think that he tried to say, like, let's control these checks because they got a lot of penalties and that really cost them in, this, in the first half. So I really think he wanted to get the message across saying, hey, let's try to control our six a little bit on defense and let's try not to give them any more man up, man up plays. See Young Choi, another good clear for Korea. So the Koreans on the verge of a tournament high in goals, which was nine in their recent victory a few days ago against Mexico. But when you compare scores, Connor, it's very easy to do that across sports. But there are so many factors in this tournament because teams play back-to-back. -back and the injury factor, simply the, the, the physical wear and tear is such a factor that you can't uh, underestimate. As Alex Millen, his skip pass is eventually picked up on the outside, and Korea has it with Min Jae-Yu, one of the two Yu brothers. And Kim will recover. But Mexico, they battled Greece to a pretty competitive game, and Greece is 3-2. and two. They just knocked off New Zealand in the game before this, 12-11, decided in the final seconds. And Greece, they have ex-Division One and current Division One, and even a future Division One player on their roster. Yeah, I really think that um, when you compare games and stats, like all the stats can be inflated just because different pools have different talent. And really looking at the stats going into the game, can really be misleading and really tell a different picture while, while the game's going on. Like at halftime, you can see that this, like we thought this was going to be a close game, and right now it looks like Korea is trying to run away with it. So anything's possible in the game. You, you can look at stats all you want, but in, it doesn't matter. Anything can happen in the game. Alan Amoni hopes that he can make that happen. And then at the start here with the clear with Korea with a zone ride. 
The attackman at the very top, and Amoni will slowly walk it ahead. If this is your first game watching the FIL tournament, there is no failure to advance. Now they attack Amoni, and he throws a strike ahead to the attack minute. And a flag is out, and the shot taken by Twisime, and we'll get the flag against Korea. Yeah, Korea's got a lot of penalties in this game right now, and if I'm the Uganda coach, I'm telling us, I'm telling my guys to let's let's relax and let's just try to get let's try to get some nice clean shots off here, and let's really take advantage of this man up, and let's try to try to get some good shots and try to not make anything stupid, try not to get any stupid uh, penalties, and let's just control it and relax. That's the really big thing here. Relax, be calm, don't force anything. We had a buzzer go off, but that is, I think, the field over from us. So here is Uganda with his man up opportunity. Castro Onan got it from Regan Ochan. There's the good skip pass as Kasule had to bring it down off the grass surface. The Ugandan coaching staff has a lot of talent there. Now, just in addition to Pete Ginnegar, 45 years of college coaching, as Ochan got a good look. The pressure from Jay Hong Ku, the defenseman. But not just Ginnegar, who was a Division I head coach a couple times at Gannon before the program dropped. Mercyhurst started the program two years at D1. An assistant at Cornell, Ohio State. Longtime D3 coach, club coach. He's got Mike Allen there, a club coach at Cal Santa Barbara, who played at Yale University. He's a Baltimore guy. And he's got Teddy Bergman down there, Division III Coley of the Year. A couple years ago is Twisime, or rather that was, that was Subanga with the shot. And that was a good feed to the crease. So the leadership is there. And then not to forget about John Christmas, a two-time All-American at Virginia where he won the 2003 National Championship. What a great career he has had through indoor lacrosse and major league lacrosse. And he has been around this Ugandan programming community now for several years. This is not just a fly-in and coach deal. Christmas could even be the future head coach as Kenneth Kasule leaves it here for Ochan. So Uganda with the second effort. We are all even following the flag. And aggressive play there from Min Sung Yu, who goes by the name Clint. He's 23 years old. The two Yu brothers have spent a lot of time in the States. Shot from the wing, and Uganda's got two. Reagan Ochan with the finish overhand. And Ochan with the shot. That is his first goal of the World Championships. The dance and the goal celebration was waiting a while to be shown, but there it is. It's 7-2. Yeah, you really see that he's excited, and this team is really getting pumped up about that goal. And even since it's 7-2, they're really playing like it's like 2-2. They're playing like it's a tie game. And like I said, these poles look like, 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 look like they're getting tired, and I'd be curious to see how the how this defense is going to play. If they're going to go from a man to a zone, they're going to be less aggressive on um, on their defense. So we'll we'll have to see what they do on defense next time. Ung Yu Ryu, and the ball carries out of bounds on the Korean sideline. So here is Uganda with possession. The other person to mention, of course, he's become a big star and will be even a bigger one. 2014 World Championships in Denver, Tom Schreiber, the Princeton star, who had just finished up his career. He did not make the final 23 U.S. roster. He was right on the bubble a year out of school. Of course, we know how great of a roster it is to make. So Tom Schreiber spent the two weeks, or I think even more time than that, as an assistant coach with Uganda, following, uh, volunteering his time there in Denver. So he has had an interest in what is going on with this program. As in the corner, Uganda had it. We'll have the whistle as Andrew Kim was there defending and playing a D midi spot for Korea. So the ball on the restart 
again with Uganda. So great stars have found ways to help these developing countries, and that's significant. Kasule turning back. It is Ochan. Kasule up high with Korea, looking like they've switched to a zone defensive look. Ochan dips the head of the stick, took it into traffic. Way too many red jerseys. And here with the pickup is Jay Han Park. They'll go back here to the goaltender in Sun Woo Kim. No relation between the two Kims here, although the Yu's are brothers. And we'll tell that story as we go. Is Andrew Kim, who's already got a goal. Uganda has cut it to 7-2. to two. And Suzuki works it along. And this patient and fundamentally sound Korean set. So trying to get started is Min Jae Yu. Drops it down. Min Jae played two years at U Penn. He's now 26 years old as both U brothers attended the United States for boarding school where they attended uh, a New England boarding school and continued the American in American universities. They attended Connecticut's rectory school where Min Jae was playing baseball before lacrosse drew his interest. This shot is blocked, and Uganda is going to have the ground ball. And then the Ugandan midfielder spun around, and a push is going to be called against Hyun Min Mu. We'll tell that story when we come back. We've hit the media timeout of this third quarter. The quarter is even up at one. It's 7-2 Korea over Uganda on ESPN+. Plus. Today's game is being brought to you by Epic Lacrosse, the leader in technologically advanced lacrosse equipment. Proud to be the official head, shaft, glove, and arm protection of these 2018 FIL World Lacrosse Championships in Natan to Israel. Epic is proud that so many teams from around the globe have trusted them for all their gear needs. Epic Lacrosse, live, play, and be. And Gladi Lacrosse, making equipment designed and perfected by lacrosse players, specifically for lacrosse players seeking to take their games to the next level. Visit them at gladiolacrosse.com. With Connor Watson, Ralph Pidnarczyk, we continue in this third quarter, eight and a half to go. We're past the media timeout. This quarter is even up at one, and a much better-looking Ugandan team has come out. 
Yeah, it really seems like this offense is really starting to get its more of a shape here. And this defense is playing more of a zone right here. Castro, though, may have forced the shot from distance, about a 16-yarder. Yeah, as we said, they only have four uh, long poles, so they're going to have to switch now in this um, in this third quarter and fourth quarter between uh, man, man and zone. So it would be um, curious to see how Uganda reacts to the different changes from man to zone. A ground ball in traffic. A nice ground ball from Clint Yu, the 23-year-old. And the U's, their path to Natanya starting in the States after they left their native Seoul for New England boarding schools. They went to the rectory school, as I said, but then they were teammates for a year at Phillips Andover Academy in Massachusetts, where Min Jae was the captain, played midfield. Clint was a defender. So there is a good U.S. presence to this Korean team as a skip pass is deflected off the stick of Ochan, but flying on is Kenneth Kasule for Uganda. Ochan might have forced a shot, and there is a flag just as Kim chased the ball behind. And this will be Korea again in the box, says Eric Yoon, a midfielder, a backup midfielder, Didi Midi there, is in the box. Yeah, I really hope that uh, Uganda tries to put something together here as Korea has been really biting themselves in the butt with penalties in this game. So if Uganda can capitalize off this off this penalty, it'd be really huge for their offense. It's really huge for their sideline to really motivate them going more into this game. Liberty Twasime is the lefty on that side. Did not get the look. Ochan twirls away and good aggression there from Hyun Sok Khan. He's just 20, one of the youngest members of this career team. Twasime took the hit, a flag is out. And Uganda gets the goal. And maybe a bit more as he took a shot, maybe with an elbow. But Twasime earns that goal. It's 7-3, the man up tally. Yeah, really, really a big goal there for Uganda. And even had, now having a penalty and now even being man up again, they're really going to want to win this faceoff here and try to get this try to get this ball back on offense so they can try to be, make uh, more momentum for this for this team. This this faceoff is going to be really important here for this Uganda team. The clock is stopped because of the injury to Twasime as he receives medical attention going to the far side of the field. It's a one minute body check. So there will not be a face off and an ensuing man up beginning for Uganda. So the clock will start when the when the officials blow it in this case, it greatly benefits Uganda. They got the stoppage and a chance to regroup for a few extra seconds. But they will miss Twasime, who's got the best lefty shot on the team. Yeah, I really think that um, not having this faceoff for Uganda really helped them because Korea has been really dominating on these faceoffs in this game. So really just having a chance to go right into their offensive set really is a good uh, good opportunity for this team. And it is a six on four. So can they get a good look? Oriana could not get the shot off. Kong lost it. A bit unsettled and Kim making the save. A force of a shot by Uganda. That was probably not the look they wanted. They had a little bit more time there, Connor, to look for something better as the shot forced by Sam Ochan. Yeah, and there's still, there's still, um, Korea's still man down, so Uganda should be really pressing out right here to try to get this ball back and try to capitalize on this opportunity that they only have a short time left on. Korea behind with Hyun Jun Park to take it into the corner, and now settling here up high with the stick of Min Jae Yu. Two years at UPenn, and so he has great experience. Min Jae missed the Denver Championships in 2014 while fulfilling his military service after graduating from UPenn. But in late January, Min Jae Yoon got the incredible opportunity and once in a lifetime moment to carry the Olympic torch to represent Korean lacrosse ahead of the Pyeongchang Olympic Games. That was in February. He was selected to help promote lacrosse and the other developing sports like this one. Looks like um, Korea wants to go for the short um, short stick for a short stick matchup here. 
So let's see if it uh, turns out to be in their advantage here. We are all even. Hyunmin Mo. So Uganda squanders that six on four situation to try to get within three. And now our officials gather together with another stoppage. Looks like we're all even now here. And Korea making a change to the midfield. So Hyun Min Mo will start up side. The keys that head coach Won Jae Park talked about with his team four games in, handling the controllables to execute, to win as one, spin the ball around, part of his emphasis as there's an injured player down, the shot outside, good block. As there's one Jay Park for the first time, number three right in front of you. So the head coach, the only player head coach, and what an interesting dynamic that Korea has, but that's the status that they're in. They had three players go down with injuries, so I think in part uh, that led Park to be a head coach, and he's the fourth attackman. Yeah, I really think it's an interesting, uh, interesting concept that no, none of these other teams have, that they have a player coach on the field that could really help them and they have coaches on the sideline and a coach on the field it's a real advantage for for this team that not other teams may not have an injured Korea player on the far side and the Korean player heading off is and I could not tell it, it by process of elimination it looks like there are uh, Uganda's two men down here as they got two penalties. And Korea having to sub the injured player off. So that's what the holdup was. So a backup attackman Ho Sung Han is in for the first time. As he spins the ball back behind. So head coach Wan J Park and as he held it timeout called by his assistant coach ahead of this six on four that is a very interesting dynamic but as we asked coach park how he handles things it is it is something that he separates coaching during the game and over to his assistant coach and he seems to have tremendous faith in what goes on there i wonder how much talking he does especially in these offensive huddles uh or does he allow the assistant coach, or does he become his own offensive coordinator? You know, I'm very, I'm very interested in that too. Because if you think about it, you have you have the head coach on the field, and he put he really has to put faith in his assistant coach to know to see it more on the field. Because the assistant coach is going to see more on the field than the head coach is on the field. So having having more more sets of eyes on the field, having the head coach on the field with the assistant coaches in the field, I feel like, is a more of a dynamic and really can help strategize with their offense or defense or whatever. It really, I feel like, is another dynamic to this team that not other teams may not have. And within this Korean roster, thinking about their bigger picture and moving the game forward in the country of Korea, that there's about four to five youth coaches that play on this roster. So they are still... They're coaching club teams, and of course the U brothers, who have are both going to graduate from Ivy League institutions. The younger brother Clint is going back to Yale in the fall. After he spent last year studying in, or he's going to return to Yale after next year, he'll study in Paris, studying abroad. But so they'll have an American influence. But the Korean natives, in particular, the future coaches of this program to help take it to the next step. Millen, quick shot, and he stuck it. That six on four, he was the guy they wanted to get the ball to. Alex Millen with his third goal of the night. He had the first two and a well-executed two-man up for Korea. Yeah, really what Korea wanted to do there is they wanted to spread They wanted to spread everything out, so then they made the, made the Ugandan defense go to them. So really just spreading the four 
the the four people that the four long poles that they had on the field really just and trying to rotate it all the time just made it difficult for Uganda to get to the ball in time and just the quick passes by Korea really helped them there. Face off win, but a quick whistle and a flag is out. And it will be a slashing call, another one. And Uganda clearly leads the tournament in slashing calls. And they have such an aggression as Bernard Otim picks up that foul. Yeah, I feel like Korea is going to try to do the same exact thing they did the last time. Just have an open, have an open offense. Make, make, them, make them move. Make them rotate. And if they, if they do that, I... I can guarantee you that they're going to they're gonna have another successful uh, two men up. This shot wide, and Korea keeping back up with this 8-3 lead. Final minute of the third quarter. So a six on four to create some real separation. Shot off cage by Ung Yu Ryu. I mean, he's got two goals. Millen on that far side, and they move Kim to the top of the man up umbrella. Now they look to feed the high slot. It carries through, and Ryu pursues. And the ball hockey sticked ahead, but picked up by Kim. 30 seconds remaining. About 20 more remaining on the man up. Then the shot fired in. Ryu tried to surprise Amoni. Interesting shot there that he took. Personally, I would have never taken that shot just because you can just move it around and try to get the... You're, you're two men up. You don't don't need to be taking that shot as now they have one guy back in. Back in so they lost the two-man opportunity as now they're going to have a box. It looks like a box at one with a string guy on the center as uh, Korea tries to put, puts one on crease. And what they've been doing here looks like is they have keep keep trying to exchange uh, exchange the crease guy so they could um, try to make him move more and try to make this defense rotate which has been really struggling for them lately in this game. Kim, and now just firing at will. Maybe not the best shots during this man up for Korea. No, it looks like they're just trying to get, get lucky with a goal here. They'll have to wait till the fourth quarter. The two men up has a few more seconds left. It's 8-3 Korea. Their man up so far has had plenty of chances. We're back for the final quarter in the final game of the night in Netanya Israel on ESPN Plus.
fourth quarter starts with Korea leading Uganda 8-3. to three. And a good start for Uganda with Patrick Oriana capturing the faceoff. Got it down low, looking for Liberty Twasime. And the interception from Hyung Suk Kang, who's played well tonight. The 20-year-old defender, 30 in red, got it ahead. And Korea will spread it out. Min Jae Yu, and here to the stick of Alex Millen, who had a solid career at Bishop's University. They're called the Gators in the eastern township of Quebec. Beautiful area of the country. And Millen has three goals today among the stars for Korea. There is actually a pretty good Canadian university influence. Reed Reinhardt I saw is coaching with somebody here. He was a big star. Millen, well Millen is a star tonight. He puts that into the corner pocket on Amoni on a speed dodge from the wing. Yeah, really. I've, Going back to that faceoff, I really think that Uganda really try, wanted to try to get an early goal and just build off of that. But I really think that they should have just probably just tried to settle it down, try to get something off it. It's only it was only a five goal game at that point, so they probably could have just passed it around, got something off. But I understand that the pressure is there, and you need it. they wanted to try to get a goal, try to get back into the game. But it ended up costing them at the end as they tried as they gave up the goal there. And Millen shot the ball extremely well. The advantage in the X2 has belonged, but feels like to Co, not just some clean wins, but he's been good on the wing. Oriana, this is his best face-off win. Yeah, another great face-off win. Hopefully they can uh, try to capitalize on this, on this opportunity that they got, and try not to throw it away like they did last time. So Twasime got it ahead to Castro Onan. Uganda really trying to go for the uh, short stick for sh very short stick matchup here as they can try to dodge down low and try to get a nice pass off and try to get a good shot here. Eric Yoon. Onan will whip the pass to the wing for Reagan Ochan. And Kasule. And Kenneth Kasule surveying his situation. 9-3, the lead now for Korea. And off the face dodge, this shot is blocked. Looking for the ground ball. Uganda, after Kim made the save, flag is out. And we will see yet another. This will actually be an illegal body check for a minute against Korea. And there's been times tonight where Korea has kept Uganda just hanging around due to all their fouls. Yeah, it looks like, looks like Uganda's gonna get another opportunity here. And they already capitalized on one opportunity in this game. So they're gonna try to go for a second. This was a good shot there. And another flag on the play. Well, now they're piling up and we're gonna have a six on four. Great opportunity for Uganda here to try to get something going try to get something going with their offense as they have all four long poles on the field right now. So if I'm if I'm Uganda's offense, I'm trying to sl try to just pass around, make these guys run. Quick shot by Twasime and sprawling to make the save on the speed dodges Kim and backup goes to Korea. Hyun Sok Kang, an impressive 20-year-old, won the battle to the end line. Yeah, it looks like they're going to try to um, sub a long pole off here and try to get some le fresh legs and try to really try to get this ball back on offense and try to hopefully settle down. But Uganda has been really playing some push out defense here. So I'll be curious to see how Uganda takes this uh, pos defensive possession if they press out or they're going to play more of a laid back defense. But late in the game, I feel like they're going to be playing really pressed out here. Offsides now called against Korea. So some self-inflicted wounds have prevented them from really pulling away and maybe getting a truly satisfying victory in terms of cleanliness as Jae Hong Koo, four in red. 
And he picks it up, haven't mentioned him tonight, but he's been a starting defender in the crease. And the four poles tonight for Korea, they've been solid. There's only four of them. And if they pick up a penalty, which has happened, they have to give it their pole over to a short stick. Yeah, and actually uh, Korea has given up a goal while, when they gave their uh, long stick to a shorty. So very interesting how um, and how this situation for Korea has really affected them. Young Jun Park got the clear into the corner. This is a Uganda team that plays strictly man-to-man -man defense. It's something they've emphasized. They have the athleticism to do it. And Pete Kinnegar has not yet taught them a zone. And the big problem he's felt is lack of game experience, especially dealing with pressure. They've played in the East Africa seven on sevens, but those are not quite full field games. There is subbing as Alan Amoni chases down that errant clear, but it's just not the same compared to what we're watching here at the bigger field. Just a different kind of game, although you are working on your skills. Yeah, and we're on the big national level too, so or the big world world level. So these games are going to be a lot bigger than any seven-on-seven -seven game you play, and you're going to be you're going to be running a lot uh, a, a lot less a lot um, less than a seven-on-seven -seven versus a, a full field game. And Uganda has proven that they are the most developed country. They are right now the leaders in the clubhouse in the continent of Africa in lacrosse. And several more are knocking on the door. Y Uganda even has a women's lacrosse team that has the equipment. They have some organization. As the game continues to grow and even to the furthest continents. Ryu now a keep it in call against Korea with seven minutes gone in the fourth quarter. Ryu, flag is out. Outside shot, and it missed. Now is 1J Park, the head coach, looking for the goal. And now the flag, it will be against Patrick Oriana. And the best midfielder for Uganda heads off, as well as well, Oriana was the first. He is not the one penalized, though. It's one of the poles. Quick restart, a shot and a goal. Hyun Min Mo lined that up. And off these quick restarts here in Israel, Uganda was just not ready to play defense. 10 3. Yeah, and Uganda, or um, um, Korea has just um, passed their surplus, passed their uh, pass of. Most goals in a game in the uh, World Championships here, so this is a big step for them as they try to gain some more goals and try to try to take this game away with only about 12 minutes left in the game here. It is determined high, previously surpassing the nine goals they scored a couple days ago in their other victory. And this one now well in hand. They had defeated Mexico 9-6. Face off, Millen. And a nice looking get back in the hole from Uganda. After, I've been impressed with Do Hyun Ko. And he's taken advantage of whoever's been up there. And he looks like he has all the tools to progress in his career. And especially with Korea moving into the, the ASPEC tournament, the Asia Pacific tournament. I'm curious to see the, the next countries, but we've watched Chinese Taipei, also known as Taiwan. They are such a young team. They have 11 teenagers on their team as this ball bounces around, and Uganda had the chance to pick it up, and they don't. And another whistle, and the ball will go back to Uganda to survey the clear. But Taiwan and Korea, I think, could play a fine game. We've seen the progress of Hong Kong that they've made under... Victoria, British Columbia native and Team Canada member Scott Browning as head coach. Here's Twasime in transition, takes it to goal and finishes with a nice bouncer. A well-run transition that started off the clear by Uganda, and it's 10-4. Yeah, that goal was a real, real motivator there. As you can see, they really celebrate there. They're really happy to, to just have the opportunity to be here and just, like, get in these goals and, like, 
just making these making these guys really happy and just really motivating them. And as we go into the last ten minutes of this game, ten to four, it's really not that bad of a game as we uh we knew this was gonna we thought this was gonna be a close one as um Uganda's trying to close down the gap a little bit as it's a six goal uh, differential. We've hit the media timeout. 10-4 as Uganda gets the last one and two developing nations continuing to show strides even the course of this one late into the evening. We're back to wrap it up in a moment on ESPN+. Plus. Fans, Maverick Lacrosse is proud to be the official social responsibility partner of these world championships. With best in-class design and input from the game's top players, Maverick is on a tireless mission to offer innovative, high-performance products. Nothing should get in the way of an athlete playing their best. See more by following Maverick Lacrosse on Instagram. Maverick Lacrosse, powered by the player. 10-4, the lead for Korea. They jumped out. 2-0 at the end of one. They've gotten a four-goal game from attackman Alex Millen. The edge in the face-off game. And while the, the penalties have been about even in terms of high volume, which has been a lot, they have converted on three man-ups. A failed clear by Uganda will give the ball to Korea here in the final 909. Yeah, I really think that turnovers have been a big um, part of this game too as Uganda has really thrown the ball away a lot in this game and I feel like if Uganda hasn't thrown the ball away or taken uh, any um, unnecessary shots that this game could be a lot different with uh, a closer game, possibly a 10-6 uh, to 6 game or 10-7 to 7 game as they had a lot of opportunities, even a 6 v 4, 6 v 4 opportunities that they could have capitalized on. Alex Millen threw that pass away. Looking to the wing, Castro Onan has the pickup. Onan then fires low save, made fine save by Kim. And there was a lot of traffic in front of him. And we'll get the loose ball, the ward off, I think, or a push off against Liberty Twisime. Yeah, stepped in the crease right there and tried it while trying to get the uh, ball to get the uh, extra shot when the goalie wasn't paying attention, but ended up costing him and try to get the clear for Korea right now. Kim, it's off of his stick. Kim, though, will swoop in and under pressure, still get rid of the ball, and a flag is out. And I think the official Adrian Marcinkowski is going to meet with our head referee. I think we're going to have yet another slash. 
Yeah, a lot of penalties in this game, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see uh, if any, if we can get a capitalization on this penalty. As not a lot of uh, op not a lot of uh, capitalizations have happened off penalties. So if there's a, if the offense can capitalize here and get get a goal, this game could be uh, put away here. Looks like the goalie is shaking up a little bit for uh, Korea. They tend to goalie Sun Woo Kim, and he is still down. I think on that save that he made on Castro Onan, shooting it through a screen, that must have must have irritated bit, something. And and kind of the way he went sprawling down. Sun Woo Kim, just 21 years old. You can see the building blocks are here, led by the Yu brothers. Between Clint, also known by his, his official name in Min Sung Yu, and then Min Jae Woo. Andrew Kim, their leading scorer. Alex Millen, a Canadian that has spent the last two years teaching English in Korea after graduating from the Bishops University in Canada. So there's a North American feel to this Korean team. And it looks like Sun Woo Kim, whatever it was, they had looked at his... Looks like it may be his right knee that is taped up and perhaps a cramp. It looked like he just couldn't get up and motioned over that he needed at least some water and a break. So it looks like he is all right with the medical stoppage at 7.52 left. We've seen, a, I don't know what the official number is, Connor, but there's probably, I would estimate, five to ten players with heat exhaustion that had to be tended by medical staffs. Uh, here in the medical building at Wingate Campus. Yeah, he's been a real problem here as um, players have to really hydrate and um, get out, get just get water in between in between shifts and everything. And it's, it's, thank God this game is at night because during the day a lot of teams are have the problem of needing to sub all the time because their their players are dying and dying because they're running back, especially the midfielders. They're running up and down the field with no. And they're gonna they have to get stuck on defense and can uh, transition, so s sometimes they just get really tired and then some teams pick up on that and they just capitalize off of that. So I think the heat has been a real factor in this tournament for all these teams, and especially for the teams playing at night. I mean they're they're lucky, but I mean it's still it's still pretty hot out here. You're playing at Clark University in Iowa, which is another new program under our pal coach. Coach Moore, how can, what is what do you do in, in cases like this if you're a player uh, to have a chance to make it through, especially playing uh, so many consecutive back-to-backs? Uh, yeah, we just gotta. He likes. We really like to just take it easy, and we have we had a small squad last year, so we really had to um, really just take it easy after games, be careful, not try to do anything like um, overrated or anything like that, and. I think the real message, we really played a zone defense last year because we didn't have a lot of um, defenders. So we really try to play, we really try to be relaxed and we had a, we had a nowhere situation that we had in our team. So we really, we, had, we really had to focus and really just dial in, especially playing on defense. It, even if we got scored on, sometimes we wouldn't be able to come off. So we really just had to put everything in behind us and then pass. Coming out in front, and there is a finish on a speed dodge for the head coach, Juan J. Park. So that about completes this evening for Korea. Park came in as Uganda locked off against Alex Millen at the start of that sequence. So the man-up goal again for Korea, and that is their fourth man-up goal of the game. Yeah, very interesting how Uganda locked him off, as we haven't seen that very much all game. It's just locking a single person off, and it ends up not wor very wor working out for them. So I'd be interested to see uh, how they uh, come back from, how their defense comes back to this, and how they really adjust from after this game 
for um, the next game, either tomorrow or um, the following day. Uganda will be playing tomorrow and Friday. And at times, the changeovers from one game to the next can be about 19 hours from the end of the first, the end of the previous day's game and into the start time of the next game. As Korea tries to fake the hidden ball trick, but it will be Ong Yo Ryu that will quarterback up top. He's got the ball on the right hand of your screen. 10 4 Korea. Less than six minutes to go as they are about to pick up their second win of this tournament. Yeah, it looks like Korea is just trying to slow things down here, but Uganda is not giving up. They really want to try to get another possession here as Uganda or. Korea just is trying to slow th things down, take it easy, and just run out the clock. But looks like Uganda does not want to give up yet. Ryu and Kim will skip it over to the wing. It's a keep it in call, but Korea did not notice it. And now a flag is out. This is going to be a delay of game against Korea. Yeah, especially... I really think that Uganda, the Ugandan defense they're pressing now and pushing him out of the box and him not noticing that really put an emphasis, put really uh, put a focus on the uh, offense of Korea and it kind of shows their uh, lack of concentration there is they're probably a little tired from running up and down the field all this game. So now the Ugandan man up. With four and a half to play. They got a goal from Liberty Twisime last time as they tried to feed the crease. It, it never made it through to Kim. And to settle things is Hyun Min Mo. Up ahead, Min Jae Yu. Looked across, looked for Park on the cut. And it's going to be Uganda that will pick it up. So the 32nd man up for Uganda does not result in a shot. Kasule, four minutes left. And finally, Uganda can run some settled offense. Uganda getting four goals in this game. One of them was a terrific finish. As they defeated Luxembourg 7-6, to six. that is their high water mark. Look for a moment that Uganda would have a chance at 8-3. Into the fourth quarter. Could threaten that, but that doesn't look possible. As they overthrow the ball looking for Kasule. Trying to pick it up in one motion was Twisime. And here's Jehan Ku. And Twisime not giving up at all, showing great hustle here at the end of this game. Yeah, you can really see that these players are starting to get tired as these passes are starting to get a little more lazy and passes are starting to go a little ways and catches are, people, looks like some players aren't catching the ball. So you can definitely see that fatigue is definitely being a factor in these last couple of minutes of the game. Jahan Park. And here in front of us, one Jay Park. What do you think will make Coach Slats player, Coach Park here, happy about this one? Yeah, I think he's really going to be happy about how his team has played. And I really think that if they're going to go back to the film, that they really have to look at their defense and their checks and everything. As they've, They have been playing a very aggressive defense, but their penalties have really killed them. And they want to win another game in this tournament that they're really going to have to look down and really settle down, especially even for Uganda, too. If they want to win the last game or another, if they want to win another game in this tournament, they're really going to have to look at their checks and look at how they're playing on defense and really just settle down. Instead of slap checks, they need poke checks because in the end, poke checks are going to be more effective than slap checks in the game. To keep it in call against Korea. Park. And just content to hold it. And of course, when you're the head coach and a player, you've really got to essentially practice what you preach or show it on the field as Park does take the shot. 
And he does get back up for a reset. Yeah, it really looks like Korea just wants to slow things down and try to end this game. But Uganda is really fighting for the end. And, and that's really what I like about this team. They will fight to the end because they know that they have this opportunity. And they're very blessed to be here. And they're really thankful to be here. And they're not going to waste a minute to play in the World Championship lacrosse game. So they're going to take every minute for granted. And they're going to try to try to get at least one more goal in this game. Uganda is one of the few programs out of the 46 where the players don't have to spend a cent to be here. The Ugandan Lacrosse Federation that was created, they're able to fundraise, and as Pete Ganagar explained to us, one of the main things he does is trying to get local businesses driving up and finding donors and people that want to get involved. Shooting on the move. What a night for Hyun Min Mo. Nice screen set off the wing. Mo has another goal. That's his third of the game. And that might be all in the final 50 seconds. Yeah, it looks like Korea is just basically just wanted to slow things down. And Korea wouldn't, and uh, Uganda wouldn't let them slow things down. So Korea basically said, we're going to make you pay for making this play extra in this game and not letting us uh, run down this clock. But, I mean, props to Uganda. They're really trying hard out here, and they really want to. They really want to be a good team, and they really want to try to get better. So I give them a lot of props for not letting this game run down and really trying to finish this game out strong and not like let the last couple minutes run out. The shots from the wing tonight for Korea have been effective. Millen, Mo, two goals from Ungyo Ryu. They've been good-looking shots that can beat a lot of goalies here in Netanya, Israel. Procedure was called against Do Hyung Ko, the faceoff man for Korea. Yeah, this Final will, 40 seconds. This will probably be Uganda's last opportunity to get something here. So they're really gonna, they really should settle down here and not try to force anything. Kasule, now to the wing, Ochan. 20 seconds to go. Twisime. Turn, shoots with the right hand. Kim got a little piece of it. Ground ball collected by Kong. He is going to cheap clear it ahead in the final seconds. And actually, the ball went out, so the